Hi, and welcome to the Wayne County Probate Court. This video will guide you in filling out form PC-634, which is the annual report of guardian on condition of the legally incapacitated individual. Before we get started, this video is not legal advice and is for informational purposes only. If you have questions specific to your situation, you should seek legal advice. So let's retrieve the form from the Wayne County Probate Court website, www.wcpc.us. And when you get there, you'll see probate information. Click on that link. You'll see how to administer a Wayne County probate case. And this specific form relates to a guardianship. And you'll see a link to training for newly appointed guardians. If you click on the link, a PDF with a lot of useful information comes up and you can search for the form PC-634, which you can then do an internet search to retrieve the document from the Supreme Court of Michigan website. And you wanna look for www.courts.michigan.gov and you do your internet search. And once you've confirmed that is the correct website, click on the link and it brings up a form which you can use to begin to fill out. Now there's also uh, a link to that website on the Wayne County Probate Court website under forms, SCAO approved forms. You want to look for guardianships which brings up all of the SCAO approved forms to use in guardianship cases simply hit control F to look for the specific form annual report of guardian on condition of legally incapacitated individual click on the link and there it is again I have annotated a form to help walk through it so we'll start in whoops, the upper left we put Wayne as a county if this is the final report in the middle you'll check that otherwise moving to the right you're going to put in your case number and the judge. These are just examples. You need to put in your actual case number and judge, court address, and telephone number. Then you'll see a little note here in the middle of the form. This report must be completed yearly by the guardian or more often if directed by the court. The guardian must serve the completed report on the ward and all interested persons as required by Michigan Court Rule 5.105 and 5.125. Then the guardian must complete a proof of service, which is form PC-564, and file it in this report with the court. So there are very specific instructions for you to follow. Then you're going to insert the name of the legally incapacitated individual. And then moving to number one. It says I. You'll type in your name if you are the guardian of the adult named above in my annual report for the period of. I just typed in dates, but you're going to put in your dates specific to you. It is as follows. The present age of the adult. You put in the age, whatever it is. And you're going to start talking about the living arrangements, the current address and telephone number of the adult. This is the legally incapacitated person, the ward, that is what the adult is referencing. You'll type in the address and telephone number of them. Then the name of the facility where the adult resides, if any. You're going to put type that in here. And then if this is a new address, so check the box here. Then the adult's residence is, you're going to describe the residence by checking the correct box that accurately describes the residence. Moving to B, the adult has been in the present residence since. You put in the date that they've uh, that they moved in. 
if moved within the past year, state the changes and the reason for the change. So if it's been within this reporting period, you're going to explain why they moved. Then E, I rate the adults living arrangement as, check the appropriate box, excellent, average, below average. And then you're going to explain why it's either excellent, average, or below average. Please be specific why you are giving it the adjective that you do. Uh, clearly explain why. F. I believe the adult is content with the living situation. If that's true, check that box. Or unhappy with the living situation. I recommend a more suitable living arrangement for the adult as follows. Again, you are communicating with the court, so please be specific with examples that lead you to make these statements. Then moving to the bottom, you'll see References to statutes, MCL, and Michigan Court Rules, MCR. You need to read these. You can do that by conducting an internet search on the statute. You want to make sure when you do the internet search, you're clicking on Michigan Legislature that www.legislature.mi.gov once you confirm that, you'll click on the link, and it brings you right to the relevant statutory section. Similarly, with Michigan court rules, you can do an internet search. And again, you want to make sure it's courts.michigan.gov that you are clicking on. And when you do that, it brings up the court court rule and specifically chapter 5 we wanted MCR 5.409 so 5.409 and again that brings you to the relevant court rule governing the situation so read those references at the bottom of the first page of all SCAO forms okay moving on to page 2 which is a continuation of the description of the condition of the legally incapacitated person. Four, specifically talks about physical health. A, the adult's current physical condition is, you're going to check the appropriate box, during the past year of the adult, during the past year, the adult's physical condition has either remained the same, improved, or worsened. You're going to check one of the three boxes. If you check improved or worsen, please explain with specific examples why the what has improved or how is it has worsened. Then C, during the past year, the adult received the following medical treatment. Include checkups and dental work. So you're going to put the date, the ailment, type of treatment and the doctor's name. Obviously, if it's a routine dental checkup, uh, you would simply do the date, type in checkup, treatment, again, checkup, and the doctor who performed that. Then, number five, do not resuscitate order. Check the appropriate box, A or B. I did not execute, reaffirm, or revoke a do not resuscitate order. Or B, I executed or affirm, reaffirmed or revoked a do not resuscitate order under the for the adult under MCL 705.314D. In doing so, I did or did not consult with the adult and his or her attending physician. So again, you want to reference, read the statutory section that's referenced here and complete it accurately. Six. Physician orders for scope of treatment form. Check the appropriate box. Either A, you did not execute, reaffirm, or revoke a post form, or you did execute, reaffirm, reaffirmed, or revoked a post form under for the adult under MCL 700.431 4G. Same with number seven. 
non-opioid directive, either you did not execute, reaffirm, or revoke a non-opioid directive, or you did execute, reaffirm, or revoke a non-opioid directive. Moving on to number eight, mental health. The adult's current mental health condition is, check the appropriate box, B, during the past year, the adult's mental health condition has either remained the same, improved, or worsened. Again, in your explanations, be specific with examples. And then C, during the past year, the, the adult received the following mental health treatment. Fill in this as necessary. If no treatment were done, then obviously just leave it blank. Moving on to page three. Number nine, social activities and services. The adult's current social condition is, check the appropriate box, during the past year, under B, the adult's social condition has either remained the same, improved, or worsened. Again, be specific with explanations and examples in your write-up under B. And finally, C, during the past year, the adult has participated in the following activities. Activities. So check the boxes that apply and explain recreational, educational, social, or occupational, or either no activities were available, the adult refused to participate in any activities, or the adult was unable to participate in any activities. Check the appropriate boxes based on your situation. Number 10. List of visits during the past year. I visited the adult as follows. Type the dates that you visited with the adult. The average amount of time I spent on each visit was, type in the amount of time you spent with the incapacitated individual. C, the last time I visited with the adult was on. You'll write down the last time you visited with them. Then number 11, during the past year, I performed the following activities on behalf of the adult. You're going to type in an explanation of what you did on behalf of the adult. 12. Consultation. During the past year, I consulted with the adult before making the following decisions. Again, be specific with examples. 13. I believe the adult has the following unmet needs. This is your chance to explain what uh, the needs of the ward are and how they are not being met. Again, be specific and clear to help the judge understand what is going on. And 14, the guardianship either should or should not be continued because, and then you'll see a note at the bottom, if you no longer wish to serve as guardian, you can file a petition to terminate or modify the guardianship, which is form PC-675. Finally, page four, number 15. Check the box if this applies. There is or is not more cash or property than what was previously reported to the court. If there is, specify the additional amount. And 16, as guardian, I have been ordered by the court to file an annual count, which is attached. If that's true, check box 16 and attach the account. Then you're going to date, sign, address, and telephone number. And then finally indicate if this is a new address. So that is how you fill out the form. We hope this was helpful. We put this together at the Wayne County Probate Court because we care. Have a great day.